Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. For every two complex numbers, z and w, the absolute value of z plus w is less than or equal to the absolute value of z plus the absolute value of w. Certainly, we're trying to prove the triangle inequality for complex numbers. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to use some preliminary results, right? Some basic facts regarding complex numbers. We're going to be using eight preliminary results, right? Given any two complex numbers, z and w, these eight facts are true. So z is equal to the square root of z times the conjugate of z. The conjugate of the conjugate of z is equal to z. The absolute value of z is equal to the absolute value of the conjugate of z. The real part of z is equal to z plus the conjugate of z over 2. The absolute value of z is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the real part of z. The conjugate of z plus w is equal to the conjugate of z plus the conjugate of w. The conjugate of z times w is equal to the conjugate of z times the conjugate of w. And the absolute value of z times w is equal to the absolute value of z times the absolute value of w. Okay, so let's get into proving this theorem. Well, to start out the proof, let's give ourselves two arbitrary complex numbers, z and w. The whole goal from here is to prove this inequality. And what we're actually going to show is we're going to show that the square of this guy is less than or equal to the square of this guy. Because from there, it follows that this guy is less than or equal to this guy. So let me start out by writing the square of absolute value of z plus w. So what is absolute value of z plus w squared? Well, by the first result, if we take z to be the complex number z plus w, we have z plus w equals square root of z plus w times the conjugate of z plus w. Right. And then if we square both sides, we get this. And then by result number six, we have that the conjugate of z plus w is equal to the conjugate of z plus the conjugate of w. And then let's expand this out. We're going to get z times z bar plus z times w bar plus w times z bar plus w times w bar. And then if we apply result number one again, we know that z times z bar is absolute value of z squared. w times w bar is absolute value of w squared. So then what can we do about these middle terms? Well, by result number two, we know that z is equal to z bar bar. And now we are going to apply result number seven to this term. So really, we're going to take z to be z bar and w to be w. We're considering the conjugate of this complex number. Well, by result number seven, the conjugate splits up. So really, this is going to be equal to z bar bar times w bar. Right, so this is what we get. So really, we can replace z bar bar times w bar with the conjugate of z bar times w. And you know what? I'm just going to swap these two terms around. And actually, I'm going to swap z bar and w around. So notice what we have here. We have z bar w plus the conjugate of z bar w. So now we are going to apply result number four. We're going to take z to be the complex number z bar w. Well, if we do that, then we get this. But then if we multiply 2 to the other side, we get this. So really, z bar w plus the conjugate of z bar w is just 2 times the real part of z bar w.
And now we are going to apply result number five. Now we know that every real number is less than or equal to its absolute value. So in particular, the real part of z bar w is less than or equal to the absolute value of the real part of z bar w. Right, but then by result number five, the absolute value of the real part of z bar w is less than or equal to the absolute value of z bar w. And then multiplying two on all three sides, we get this. So really, two times the real part of z bar w is less than or equal to two times the absolute value of z bar w. And now we apply result number eight. The absolute value of z bar w is just equal to absolute value of z bar times the absolute value of w. And now we apply result number three. We have that absolute value of z bar is equal to absolute value of z. But then from algebra, we know that this is the same thing as absolute value of z plus absolute value w squared. And so we have shown through this chain of, well, only a single inequality, that this guy squared is less than or equal to this guy squared. From there, it follows that the square root of this guy must be less than or equal to the square root of this guy. But that is the same thing as saying that this guy is less than or equal to this guy. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.